Hello and welcome to another episode of the Why We Travel podcast. Today, our journey takes us to Southeast Asia, to Malaysia, and specifically there to the capital of Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. So as a guest on the show today, I have Victoria Heinz. She's a travel blogger, a freelance writer based in Bali, Indonesia. And she started the blog GuideYourTravel.com in 2018 and covers travel, budget travel, Southeast Asia travel destination guides. And her blog also will introduce you to the world of becoming a digital nomad and blogger. So let's welcome Victoria. Hi, Victoria. How are you today? Hi, I'm very good, Klaus. Nice to meet you. Victoria, tell me a little bit. What got you into traveling? Um, well, I was lucky enough to travel a lot growing up. Um, and then I just kind of continued. I studied abroad, so I left home and then I just never came back really. <laughs> okay. Was there any particular experience as a child or whatsoever that got you the travel bug that really wanted to make you be, becoming a traveler? Um, well, my parents, especially my mom, introduced me to traveling. So it's very, very lucky. And I just always remembered our trips and they're such fond memories. I want to create more. Okay, cool. Now, we're talking about Southeast Asia. I understand you're living in Indonesia right now on the beautiful island of um, Bali. So that's not that far away from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Kuala Lumpur, also one of my favorite cities. What got you to Kuala Lumpur? Tell me a little bit about it. Um, well, I actually did an internship there in 2019. Yes, right before COVID. Um, and I just loved it so much. It was very unexpected. I didn't have any expectations and I fell in love with the city. It was amazing. Okay. What makes you falling in love with Kuala Lumpur? <laughs> I don't know. Um, just I do I like big cities in general, um, especially Asian cities. I love Bangkok, Singapore. But Kuala Lumpur for me was special because I don't know, there's so much to see and do. It's that melting pot of different cultures. So you can go to different countries in one day in one city and it feels like a completely different place i always love that about Kuala Lumpur mm -hmm. now as you said it's, it's multicultural it's multi-ethnic um give our listeners a bit of an idea what they can expect when they come there well you've got a big Chinese influence so you've got Chinese Malaysians um amazing Ch Chinese food beautiful temples and then you've got the Indian side you've got Indian Malaysians little India um so cool again amazing temples completely different culture completely different food and then you've got the malaysian culture which of course also exists you've got malay people who have their own culture and it's just this combination you've got more expats as well from all around the world so it all just blends into one mm -hmm. so it's a big city um i think the city has about two million people and the surroundings gives mm -hmm. you another five or something like that what kind of vibe would you expect there? And what makes the difference of Kuala Lumpur compared to other cities in Southeast Asia? Um, let me think. I don't know. Singapore is very clean, of course, very modern. Like, for me, one of the most impressive cities in the world, whereas Kuala Lumpur is... Um, so you've got a lot more original culture, I would say, like just life happening that isn't heavily influenced by big companies or lots of tourists there of course you'll find companies and tourists but just not I don't know I feel it feels a lot more original to me still and I appreciate that you get like amazing street food but also expensive restaurants all within one and it's not too expensive which I appreciate okay what would you recommend for a first-time visitor of Kuala Lumpur or KL as the locals call it what um, would be an itinerary or what should they see and do once they arrive there um, for me the most exciting thing very straightforward but the Batu caves they always impress me I think I've been there like six seven times I still go um, they're free you can reach them by public transport super easy and they're just incredible like so so impressive that would be my favorite thing to do, I think. And then I would continue to Chinatown, which is just amazing for food, for walking around, doing some shopping, um, seeing, seeing some cool temples. Um, what else? My favorite temple, sorry, I'm very passionate about Kiel. <laughs> my favorite temple is Tianho Temple. It's a bit off the, off the radar, not everyone goes there. Um, and it's so cool. It has amazing city views, beautiful temple, great for taking photos. And yeah, I think those three places would be 
where I would start. Okay. So how do you get around in the city? What's the public transport situation in Kuala Lumpur? Uh, the metro, I think, is the easiest way to get around. Just the, I don't know, the trains, they're very easy to use, very affordable. They take you almost everywhere, like important places. And then you've got buses as well. They're a bit more tricky if you don't speak the language, but you'll figure it out. Like, it works. And then it's also a very walkable city, I think. Like, it's quite safe. You can walk to most places. Uh, so when I lived there, I was there alone. I always walked. I enjoyed it a lot. Okay. Talking about living there, are there any specific areas, neighborhoods that you would recommend? Uh, I lived in KLCC, which is very central, very financial. Um, I liked it. It was nice. You get lots of shopping malls. Um, again, you can walk around. You have lots of food courts um, that I really appreciated. I was very close to KLCC Park. So I used to go on runs there. I love that. Um, but most travelers do stay in Chinatown where I stay now when I visit KL is of course. And I think it's very fun. You have bars, street food, lots of other travelers around, very lively. Okay. How are the people, the Malaysian people? What's your, what's your experience with the Malaysian people? <laughs> oh, so friendly. I love them. I made a lot of friends. I worked in, a, in an office and most of my coworkers were Malaysian, obviously. And we had a great time. They introduced me to the city. They took me along with them. So I was, very, very happy that I found such a group of nice people. Okay, so the country obviously is a, a mainly Muslim country. Did that have any kind of impact on how you could travel, what you could do in the city? No, not really. Um, no, I went into the Indonesian embassy once in shorts and I was immediately covered with a sarong and a jacket and everything. That was, I think, the only time when I, when I did realize that was, that wasn't an okay thing to do, but I did it once and I learned. And then I just, next time I came covered up. <laughs> okay. Um, let us know any kind of funny or interesting um, story that you had in KL. Is there anything specific that really stands out? Mm, I don't know. Let me think for a second. This, that's a tricky question. Something funny. What I always keep as a special memory is going to like banana leaf restaurants. That's what I call them. I'm not sure if they have a proper name. Um, it's Indian food. And you just get a banana leaf. Everyone sits around the table and then someone orders something. It was never me because I don't speak Malaysian. <laughs> and then they just waiters come around and throw random dishes on your banana leaf with rice and you get all these curries and it's so good. But the whole table was just full of food. And it was such a, such a happy memory for me. You sit on the street and you share food with people you don't even know. And I thought that was very, very cool. I've never experienced that before. Okay. How's the climate there? How's the weather? Very hot and humid every single day. <laughs> There's no, when I was there, there was no real like wet or rainy season. It was just rain all the time, mostly. Get a lot of haze sometimes during specific seasons. But I compare it to any Southeast Asian place, just be prepared for the occasional storm and then it's fine. <laughs> okay. So KL okay, uh, is a capital city. Capital cities normally are a little bit more expensive than other places. Well, how much does it cost a traveler to stay in KL for a while? Um, I think if you want to do KL on a budget, you definitely can. Um, it's a very cheap place to eat out. Uh, you can find very, very good street food or if you go to food courts, um, you can eat for between one and three euros, get a great local meal. And then if you stay in a hostel, I think you can stay below 10 euros a night. If you're very basic, not very like interested in a nice hotel room. Hotel rooms, I'd say maybe 30 euros a night, you get something decent. Um, but Airbnbs are also very good in jail. It has a great selection of apartments. You get nice views, pool. That's a bit more expensive then. Okay. So getting there, how do you get to KL? What's, what's the best way to get in and out? Uh, the giant airport, KIA or KLIA. Um, it's a beautiful airport. There's actually two of them. And yeah, that's the easiest way to get there. I've also taken a bus there. That's very interesting, crossing the border from Singapore. Highly recommend. The buses are amazing, very comfortable. <laughs> the ride was smooth and quick. So if you are in Singapore, I'm guessing in Northern Malaysia as well, you can just take a bus. 
Okay. So what would you recommend for someone who wants to go first time Kuala Lumpur? What kind of itinerary would you do? How many days should they schedule? What kind of time frame would you recommend there? Like most travelers are quite short on time, obviously. Um, so I'd start with maybe two to four days, I think. If you're very short on time, two days is probably fine. Um, I love the city a lot, so we can easily spend a week or two there plenty of things to do, but I, I do understand. You have other places to see in Southeast Asia, but I think one day to see the Bajo Caves, uh, Chinatown, maybe walk around Bukit Bintang, which is the more fanciest place of Kaya. It's a shopping malls, nice bars. Um, plan a night to go out in the evening. This Kaya has amazing bars, like hidden speakeasies and stuff. That's always one of my favorite things to do there. And then, I don't know, explore, what else have we, KLCC, KLCC Park, the Petronas Towers, I haven't even mentioned them, <laughs> most important part of KL, the KL Tower is also very nice, so I'd say two to three days minimum. Okay, now if you're not only a traveler and traveling through, if you're a digital nomad and you want to stay there a little bit longer, what recommendations do you have on, for, for them? Um, I would get an affordable apartment somewhere. Um, I think there's a decent selection if you look. Um, and then just enjoy yourself, spend some time going to like, this is a strange recommendation, but go to local food courts where office workers go. They're not always easy to find, but they have the best food and you might meet some people along the way, other people who work nine to five and just immerse yourself in that culture and just try some of the best and most affordable food in town. And then, of course, go out at night, um, mingle. I don't know. There's some great co-working spaces popping up now. I'd highly recommend it to digital nomads. Okay, sounds great. Are there any other places around Kuala Lumpur that you would recommend to just get out of town for the weekend or something? Um, I don't know. Back when I was in KL, I actually spent most of my time in the city. I do like Langkawi. We used to go there, um, but it's obviously not very close to KL close to the Thai border, beautiful island, if you get the chance. Flights are very cheap. And then, what's the name? There's a mountain town everyone goes to. Do you know by chance? I, I'm, I forget. I'm not it's sure. the one place I, I haven't been in Malaysia. <laughs> Gen Genting Heights? Yeah, Genting that's Heights. Right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been there, but I hear great things. It's, meant, it's not too far away, so... Highly recommended, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I think everyone goes there because it's um, on higher elevation, so it's not as humid. Uh, I think the climate yeah, is a little like, bit better up there. So that's why people yeah. um, sort of have a refugee and go over there over the weekend. Yes, that's true. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. Thanks so much. What's on your travel plan? What's your next destination where you want to go? Um, I just got to Bali a few months ago, so I'm hoping to stay here for a bit. We've been traveling quite a lot, so this is time to take a break get some work done and recharge hopefully stay here for a while okay sounds good victoria where can people find more more about you is there any specific place on the interwebs where they can find you um i think my blog is a good place to start i have a lot of kale content if anyone's interested lots of valley content as well and then i'm quite active on instagram if you want to look me up there Okay, excellent. I will put the links in the show notes, then you're just one click away. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much Thank for you. giving us a bit of an insight into KL. I highly can recommend the city. I've been there a few times and I also love it a lot. And um, yeah, that's. I think that was a good summary of what pe people can expect in KL. Thanks so much for your time. I hope so. Thank you. Hey, Klaus here. Before you leave, I have a question. Are you a traveler? Do you have a favorite travel destination or favorite travel experiences that you would like to share with the world? then become a guest on the Why We Travel podcast. Simply message me and I will get you all the details for becoming an interview guest and then we take it from there. That's it for now. I see you in the next episode and have a great day.